Hey there, everyone. It's Paul here from the School Zone. And well, as most of you probably have noticed, the channel has slightly blown up over the last month or so. When I posted the original Ask Me Anything 10 for 10,000 video inviting you guys to ask questions in the comments section that I can answer for you, we had just passed the 10,000 mark. Then, just a few short weeks later, we passed the 20,000 mark. So I updated the description to say that we'll shift into the 20 for 20,000 AMA. Now it looks like we've passed the 30,000 subscriber milestone and I don't really know what to say. I'm stunned, I'm humbled, and I'm entirely grateful. So thank you all so much for your continued support and helping the channel grow as it has. Now admittedly, some of the recent attention came from a few of my videos going viral. And oddly enough, it grew even further because of some flame wars that ignited in the discussion sections of those videos. You know, the typical PC versus console debate and the SJW versus anti-SJW arguments. You've probably seen all those before on other channels. But many other people stuck around to look at my other videos, enjoyed the content, saw all of the great comments the rest of you have left on my other videos, and then subscribed. So I appreciate all that you guys are doing, whether it be leaving those great comments, sharing the videos, retweeting stuff, or just hitting that that like button it's all working and as a thank you for that I've decided to do a few more than 20 questions we'll say somewhere between 20 and 30 this will probably be the last AMA I do I mean who knows what the future holds but for the other milestones I'd like to do some other things like maybe some giveaways or a little animation thing that I have planned that sort of stuff we'll see anyway since I have so many questions to answer I'll try to keep each answer brief some will be longer than others though now, like last time, I'll throw in that good old COD footage in the background. Oh, and I also apologize in advance if I butcher anyone's name or handle. I'll give it my best shot. In fact, the most upvoted question was from one of the hardest names to pronounce. <laughs> I think it's pronounced Bio. Hopefully I said that right. Anyway, he asked five questions in one comment, but he got 14 upvotes for that comment. So I'll pick out two questions for him and then we'll move on to some others. First question, Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas? Well, that's a tough one because I love them both. I think I lean more towards New Vegas, to be honest. Can't say exactly why, it just had a really good vibe, you know? Okay, second question, who are your top three companions in Fallout 4? A lot of people asked about Fallout 4 companions, interestingly enough, so this will answer their questions too. Well, obviously Kate, since she's been with me through most of my walkthroughs, not only because she can pick locks, which means I don't have to waste perk points on locksmith, but also because she's cute, sassy, and can hold her own. I also think Bethesda did a really good job of developing her backstory. In my opinion, I think more so than any of the other companions. You guys can debate down below if you think any of the other companions have more developed backstory, but to me, hers is basically a story about a bad girl gone good, and I'm a firm believer in redemption. Also, her story is an inspiration to any addicts out there who want to get sober. I've never been an alcoholic or a drug addict myself, but I think Bethesda should get some credit for having a character in a video game that finds the strength to seek help and then succeeds in a recovery. All right, don't want to get too deep on all that, but I think Kate is a deep character. My second favorite companion was the robot I created during my Automatron playthroughs. I named her Raven. Some of you may have seen those episodes. Unfortunately, a glitch prevented her from fast traveling with me and I eventually went back to Kate, but it was definitely cool creating a flying robot assassin. And last but not least, dog meat. Mainly because he was my first companion, I'm an animal lover, and he's just funny in a really subtle way. If you haven't done it yet, put a teddy bear in his inventory and see what he does. Okay, moving on. Many, many people asked in various ways about what equipment I use for making videos. I actually list all the equipment and software I use right on the About page of this channel. Just go over and click on the About tab. Everything I use is also listed on the support page of my website in case you want to use any of those Amazon affiliate links to buy the stuff and help the channel out. I'll leave a link down below for that page. Any support like that is always appreciated. Several people asked when I'll do a face reveal. One million subs, guys. One million subs. Yes, I'm a little shy for now and I'm still enjoying my privacy. You can actually read where I discuss that on the Frequently Asked Questions page of my website. I'll leave a link to that page down below as well. But I think 1 million subs is a fair milestone to do a face reveal. And we might not be as far off from that as it may seem with the way the channel is growing exponentially. So you never know, it might even be next year, we'll see. The more you spread the word, the faster we'll get there. Which leads to the next question asked, when will you get your play button? Well, YouTube gives out the silver play button at 100,000 subs, the gold play button at 1 million subs, and the diamond play button at 10 million subs. Who knows if the channel will ever reach 10 million subs? That would be an achievement beyond anything I could imagine right now. However, 1 million subs is very achievable. 
And best of all, according to Social Blade projections, the School Zone will reach 100,000 subs by the end of the year. Perhaps even faster if you guys continue spreading the word as you have. So I may be able to feature the Silver Play button in one of my homeroom announcements sometime early next year. Can't wait for that. That'll be an amazing video to share with you guys. Okay, Darth Squeegee asked, what's your favorite video you have made on your channel? I actually do have a favorite video that I made. Most of you probably haven't seen it, but you should definitely check it out later. It was the buffet of epic kills video I did for Dishonored. I put so much effort and creativity in that video and I'm really proud of it. No commentary actually. Instead, I gave the video this sort of 1920s mafia theme. I probably put over 20 hours in that video and at 100 views at the moment, that means it made all of about 10 cents. <laughs> man. But it's not about the money. The reason that's my favorite video is because it was the first video where I really started thinking outside the box and stretching my legs and seeing video making for all its creative potential. With what I'll be doing in the years to come, I know I'll put that video to shame, but at the time I made it, I was like, wow, I'm really having fun doing this, you know? Okay, back to some Fallout 4 questions. Mystical Slime asked, what is your favorite NPC or settlement to literally obliterate in Fallout 4? Well, I answered the companion question. As for settlements, I think my Finch Farm Bunker just about obliterates any attackers with the way I set that whole structure up. I haven't had any invaders last more than a few seconds. It's kind of nuts, actually. Oh, and I'll have that final behind the scenes Q&A tips and tricks video for that settlement ready for you guys next weekend. Tilly Munchu asked, is there any way to find lost companions? Yes, there is now with the new vault Tech population management system that came with the vault Tech Workshop DLC. I actually touch on that in part four of my vault Tech walkthrough, so check that out if you haven't. Miguel Plata asked, which Fallout game is your favorite? I actually answered that in the 5 for 5000 AMA, but in case you missed it, Fallout 4 by a long shot. Irina Raksha asked, what creature in Fallout 4 do you think is the creepiest? I think the Myrler Queens are probably the creepiest, to be honest, with the way that they spit acid and pop out eggs. I don't like bugs as it is, and she's like a giant bug. If you guys are interested, I actually talk about the phobia associated with the fear of bugs in one of my Resident Evil episodes. It's not the same as arachnophobia. I'll leave a link for that down below if you wanna check it out. All right, Brian Williams asked, do you have any sponsors and are you willing, able to accept donations to help further the channel? Well, thanks for asking that, Brian, because I just happen to be in that place right now with the channel where the demand for my videos is increasing, but I'm still not making enough money from YouTube to leave my current day job. But if I were to start taking on sponsors and add a Patreon account, then in a couple of months, I might actually be able to start doing YouTube full time. At the moment, there's always that tip jar at the top right of the channel page. That's a quick way for viewers to show some financial support. But since most people either don't use that or don't even know about it, I think I'll have to bring on some company sponsors in the near future. But you guys have my word that I won't sell out or anything. If I feature any internal ads in a video, it'll only be for products or services I truly believe in. Things that could help you guys out or provide some fun entertainment. Like if Marvel came to me and wanted me to shout out one of their new comic book movies, of course I'm gonna jump on that. And the reason is, is because I'd be seeing the movie regardless, you know? All the big channels do it and their viewers don't seem to care. I don't have any sponsors yet, but if I'm ever gonna do this full time and bring you guys more videos per week, I can't be shackled to my day job. There's nothing I'd rather be doing right now than bringing you guys more videos per week. So we'll see how that all works out in the months to come. Speaking of which, Blazer Monkey asked, what's your job? I actually answered that in the five for 5,000 AMA. So check out that video. JC Shark, Kyle Osborne, and many others wanted to know what upcoming games I'm psyched about and will be featuring on the School Zone in the future. I talked a little about that in the 5 for 5000 AMA as well, but here are the known games I'll be featuring. All right, Battlefield 1, Dishonored 2, and Sniper Elite 4. Those are the definites. That will probably tie me over through winter and maybe spring, but if I can start doing YouTube full time, then I might try to squeeze in some Watch Dogs 2 and any other AAA titles you guys might suggest. You know, there is actually a game suggestion form on my contact page on the School Zone website. You guys are always welcome to fill that in. I'll also be doing some Resident Evil 4 for my Halloween Horror Arcade 2016, unless you guys can think of a better horror game to feature for Halloween. Just let me know down below. Several people asked if I'll be playing No Man's Sky. You know, that game does look really cool, but I wanna to try to finish up Fallout 4 and all the DLCs, and then finish up Quantum Break, which shouldn't take too long before the uh, onslaught of the fall games arrive. I actually did a video last year about how I got overwhelmed trying to play three or four games at once and realized that it's just not in the cards to try and do that many games simultaneously. I'm a firm believer in quality over quantity, so I'd rather focus on a few games and do them right instead of trying to chase after trends for views, you know? That's why you don't see any Pokemon Go videos on my channel. Jalen Rosario asked, would you ever consider doing more Skyrim type content? 
You know, Jalen, before Fallout 4 came out, Skyrim was probably my favorite game. Well, maybe tied with Borderlands 2, but I don't know if I'll be going back to Skyrim for content. I kind of want to keep moving in a forward direction. I was very tempted to do some Bioshock Infinite trivia walkthroughs since the remastered collection is coming out next month, but I just don't know if I'll have the time. If I had the power to stop time, I would be making videos of all these great games. But alas, making videos for YouTube is massively time consuming. And yes, even gaming videos, hours and hours to get it all just right and bring you guys that level of quality that I want to be a standard for the channel. And thus, thanks for asking, but probably no Skyrim, as much as I love that game. Hambone asked, if you could add any feature into any game, what game and what feature would it be? Well, speaking of Bethesda games, I absolutely love Bethesda's saving system. I truly wish every game out there could incorporate their save-as-you-go feature. Other game companies may not realize it, and I hope they're listening, but the save-as-you-go feature is what really sets Bethesda games apart. Get on it, guys! Some of you may have seen my Far Cry Primal rant about that. I'll put a link below if you want to hear that rant. But I am clueless as to why more gaming companies don't incorporate that feature. To me, it makes or breaks a game in my humble opinion. Admiring World asked, what country do you live in? I live in the US, if you couldn't tell by my accent. Specifically though, I live in LA. In fact, I have the orientation to unlock the YouTube Space LA in a few weeks now that the channel has passed 10,000 subs. So that will be a fun experience that I'll tell you guys all about in an upcoming HRA video. Hunter Block asked, are you a dad? Nope, single with no kids. <laughs> Just enjoying the bachelor life. Burnt DJ asked, if you have or had a pet, what is or was its name? Well, I've had many pets throughout my life. I'm a huge animal lover. My most recent pet was a cat that I named Callie. In fact, she was a black cat born on Friday the 13th. <laughs> How cool is that? I figured the two superstitions canceled each other out and she actually brought me good luck. I had her for many years. She was a total lap cat. Whenever I ate frozen grapes on the couch watching TV, she would stick her head in the bag and start munching away. It was so cute. Unfortunately, some complicated medical issues got the best of her and I just hadn't had it in me to replace her. YouTube probably replaced her in a manner of speaking, but I definitely miss that cat. And speaking of animals, Brandon Suh asked, what's your spirit animal? Oh, and it's also his birthday, so happy B-Day, bro. Interesting question there. So my spirit animal is definitely the tiger. I love tigers with a passion. In fact, getting to pet a tiger is on my bucket list. If you guys saw my first Loot Crate trivia unboxing, I actually show part of my desk in that video and you can see several little tiger figurines. I'll leave a link if you guys wanna check that out. And when the channel gets bigger, I definitely wanna start donating to some Save the Tiger charities. So stay tuned for that. I don't know the exact statistics off the top of my head, but tigers are going extinct, people, and it sucks. Gberg Sims asked, Yo, my dude, you a teacher or something? If you are, what subject do you teach? <laughs> nope, not a teacher, almost. In fact, I mentioned this in my five for 5,000 AMA. So check out that video and look for the link to my origin story. That will explain everything. And by the way, I hope you guys don't mind me linking you to older videos. It's helping get through these questions a little faster, especially if I've already answered the question in a previous video. Okay, moving on. Several people asked what I do in my free time when I'm not recording or editing for YouTube. You mean besides Netflix and chilling? <laughs> But seriously, what free time? Between my day job and YouTube, there isn't much free time left. But I do manage to do a few other things so I don't get burnt out. I try to go to the gym every day, or at least every other day. I have to with all the sitting for both jobs, you know? Gotta stay in shape. I used to be really into the martial arts. Did karate and kung fu for many years. Taught classes, in fact. Nowadays, I use the heavy bag at the gym or take some kickboxing classes when I'm not, you know, weight training or running. I also like going out with friends. I'm more of the small house party or dive bar type of guy. During my bartending days, though, I love to go into dance clubs, but not so much anymore because, uh, well, I hate waiting in lines. Let's see, what else? When I can, I like to go snowboarding or hiking. I love the outdoors, which is like the direct opposite of making YouTube videos. But I really love video games, which is why I'm so passionate about what I do here on the channel. Which is a good transition to the next question. Levi Kindle and Antonia Rose both asked similar questions about my inspiration and motivation for starting and sticking with the YouTube channel. As for starting the channel, I'll refer you guys to that origin story video. As for motivation and sticking with it, honestly, it's because of you guys. Within the last few months, even starting back in the spring, I started getting some really nice comments on my videos. And since aspiring YouTubers don't really get paid that much, all their reward comes from the encouragement of their viewers. It's really their sole currency. And I mean that both S-O-L-E and S-O-U-L. It's you guys that keep me motivated. Without an audience, a YouTuber kind of feels like he's talking to himself and it's hard to keep going. 
Perseverance pays off, but long before the big money comes that everyone talks about, the community forms. And I couldn't be happier with the way the channel is shaping. The only challenging thing going forward is the sheer volume of comments I'm now starting to get. Just a few months ago, I'd wake up to see around 50 new comments. These days, it's more like 500, and that number continues to rise daily. I love so much replying to all of you that I could spend all day doing that if I let myself, but you know, I got some videos to make. So I hope none of you take it personally if I don't respond to a comment or if I just leave like a really short reply. It's only because of the sheer volume. But have no fear. I noticed you guys commenting even when you're helping each other out down in the after school club. And it is wonderful to see. I'm also starting to see you guys help fend off the trolls. You know, sometimes I don't have the time nor the patience to do that myself. So when you guys help in that regard, it's always appreciated. And who knows, maybe someday I'll bring on some hall monitors. Or in YouTube terms, some comment moderators. I'll keep an eye out on that. But on to something lighter. Sam asked, what's your favorite beverage? Well, it kind of depends on the situation. Beer if I'm at a barbecue or chilling with my bros. Wine if I'm out on a date. Uh, ice water when I'm editing YouTube videos. But for everyday meals, I'll actually leave you guys with a little recipe of mine. It's refreshing, healthy, and super cheap. In fact, just for the fun of it, we'll call it the School Zone Lemonade. So what you'll do is you'll take a 16 ounce glass, add an eighth of a cup of 100% lemon juice. You know that lemon concentrate you find in those little lemon shaped bottles? Although I get mine in bulk from the warehouse stores. If you don't have a measuring cup, it's about an ounce or a half a shot glass or so. And by the way, I apologize to those outside the US for me not using the metric system. I know we're, we're still tards in the US when it comes to that, but you can just Google the conversions. Okay, then you'll add a dash of that liquid water enhancer. You know, like that Mio stuff, but I just buy the cheaper grocery grocery store brand. Any flavor will rock, but try it with watermelon or strawberry first. Stir a bit, then fill the glass with ice and add purified water. One word, yum. <laughs> to me, it tastes like that sweet and sour candy, you know, like Sour Patch Kids or whatever. It's amazing. And the best part is it's actually healthy for you, unlike soda and cheap. And if you're the type that drinks soda for the caffeine, you can actually get the liquid water enhancer with the energy boost. I don't use that myself, but it's definitely an alternative. And there you go, you even get recipes and health tips on the Schooled Zone, who'd have known? <laughs> Ryan Bradley asked, what is the meaning of life, Mr. Schooled? First of all, it would be Mr. Zone, right? Just messing with you. You guys can always call me Paul. You know, that's always a tough question to answer, and I do have a very deep answer, but I'll save that for another time. The short answer is this, be happy and try to help others be happy as well. If you can accomplish the first one and then the second one, you will have lived a meaningful life. Which actually brings up an interesting topic I wanted to touch on. On several of my videos that went viral, some people, probably mostly trolls, are dumbfounded that I sound so happy when I make my videos and even think my laugh might be fake. So let me go ahead and nip that in the bud. I am a happy person. And when I laugh, giggle, or chuckle in my videos, it's 100% authentic. First, about being happy. I mean, come on, I'm making videos about video games. Why wouldn't I be happy? It's the most fun thing I've done in years. If you go back and listen to my very early videos, especially my first few Dishonored videos, I sound so reserved, but it's actually because I was holding myself back. I don't know why, probably shyness or just social anxiety perhaps. I mean, putting yourself out there to the world is very daunting. Then during one video, I had a breakthrough moment. I'll never forget it, it was episode 10. I was reading a book in the game called Timeless Children's Rhymes. And before I got to the end, I had erupted into laughter over its silliness. Except what I did was I edited that out. After I posted the video, I thought to myself, why did I edit that out? That was genuinely me being me. And that's when it dawned on me. I had cut it out out of fear of ridicule. I had cut it out because I was worried people would think it was fake. Of course, I'm not the only one who laughs in their YouTube videos. It's not like a trademark of the channel, but it's not a common trait when so many others take it all so seriously. But that's when I said, never again. If I'm gonna make videos for YouTube, I'm gonna have to be nothing more than myself. And since then, I've never edited out a giggle, even if it sometimes sounds a bit goofy. And you know, when those trolls are saying it's fake, they are giving my acting skills entirely too much credit. First of all, I'm a terrible actor. I actually tried acting for a bit when I first moved to LA. Wasn't good at being fake, probably because I'm not a very good poker player. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Also, faking stuff in videos takes way too much energy and effort. And you guys could tell it wouldn't sound organic. So when you hear me being happy and laughing in a video, that's entirely me being me. And yes, I do find humor in strange things. To me, many things in life are pretty funny. 
fear. I'll give you a great example. I went to the zoo with a date not too long ago. And of course, before we left, I had to visit the tigers. Well, there was a small crowd in front of the tiger cage and the big bad tiger decided to give the crowd a bit of a show. And if any of you know what scent spraying is, you'll know what I'm talking about. The tiger literally did a friggin' handstand, bent backwards on his front paws, and gave the crowd some of that yellow rain. Just about everyone in the crowd except me recoiled in disgust and either yelled or booed at the tiger. Of course, he didn't care. He just walked off. But not me. I was laughing my ass off. And it's good to know facts in these situations. First of all, urine is sterile, so there's no worrying about catching any diseases from it. Second, it wasn't entirely urine. Most of it was actually a glandular must that animals use to mark their territory. And I also knew that tigers sometimes do that as a way of communicating. So in a roundabout way, the tiger was actually telling the crowd, you guys are awesome and I wanna make you all mine. Anyway, that whole situation was absolutely hilarious to me, although my date didn't find it funny at all. But as you can tell, I do laugh at weird things sometimes, and it certainly happens in video games. But like I said, that's just me being me, and I like my style of commentary. So I'm not going to be changing it for some trolls who may just be unhappy in their own lives and not understand that someone else can be happy doing what they're doing. So there you go. And if you guys see comments like that in the future, be nice, but feel free to tell those cynics that I'm just a happy guy and I enjoy making videos for you guys. That's not to say I don't have problems in life. Everybody has problems, I'm human, you know? I get mad sometimes, it's like everybody else, but I try my best to take things in stride. And when I'm playing video games, that's like my little mini heaven, you know? So why wouldn't I be happy, you know what I'm saying? It's so weird that people might think it's fake. It's just, it blows my mind. But anyway, moving on, last question here. Matai Stefan asked, what do you plan on doing with the channel in the future? Good question. Well, here's a quick list of some new elements I'll be bringing to the channel in 2017. First of all, some animation if I can master After Effects. I just need to find the time to work on that. Also, I'm gonna add merchandise for purchase, but I'm gonna be doing it a little differently than other channels. All the money made from merch will go directly to charities. I have some placeholder pages on my website that mention that. I haven't gone into detail about that yet because I was waiting on federal trademark approval. That finally came through this week, so I'll be making a whole video explaining everything about that. Also, if you go back and check out my very first video I ever posted on YouTube, I mentioned a sideshow I wanna produce someday called Sunday School. Cool, huh? It would be an interview type show where I'd have celebrity guests in the gaming world like top developers, lead competitors, video game art designers, or even other types of celebrities like actors that really love video games. I would do that like one Sunday a month or something. That's still a ways off, but actually maybe not too far off once I unlock the YouTube space. Point is, many ambitious plans for the channel. I just gotta carve out the time. That's like the biggest challenge I face right now. But like I've said in past videos, where there's a will, there's a way. All right guys, that's gonna wrap this up. Exhausting, but fun as hell. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe learned a little something. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to see more great videos to come. I'll be back to Far Harbor this week and then that settlement Q&A video next weekend. And then on to Nuka World in September. Thanks again, guys, for helping the channel reach this amazing milestone. Onwards and upwards, and as always, LPK. Love, peace, knowledge. Mm -hmm.